Welcome back to another DAX for Power BI video. Today we're going to be talking about measure totals. And what I mean by that is, you, let's say you've created a new measure and you've thrown it into a table and all of your measures look good except you look down at the aggregate row and you see it does not look the way it should. Most people would expect that all of the rows of a table would sum up to a particular value and that would be displayed in the total row. Uh, but that's not usually the case. Uh, in, in order to explain better, let's go ahead and dive into it. If you look at the table right here, we see five years worth of data, each with sales amounts, and you can see this 29 million is just an aggregation of these five rows like you'd expect. But let's go ahead and show an example where this wouldn't be the case. Let's create a new measure, and we'll call this over 50,000. And we'll just make this an if statement to say if the row has more than $50,000 in sales, give it a one, if not, give it a zero. So the way we do this, if some sales amount uh, is greater than 50,000, give it a one, else give it a zero, close it off. Now let's throw over 50,000 into this table and we can see just like we'd expect, uh, this first row for the year 2010 does not have over $50,000 in sales, it's a zero. Uh, 2011 has over $7 million in sales, so it gets a one, just like these other columns. But the very interesting thing here is the total row. We only have a one. We would most likely expect that this total would be a sum of all of the rows above it, which would be one plus one plus one and give us three, but that's not exactly the case. And the reason for this is because this total row is calculated totally independent uh, to the calculations of these rows. These rows are calculated one by one, um, each one individually, and this total row is done the exact same way. So the reason this is messing up like this is because each one of these rows has its own, uh, has its own filter context. Uh, imagine our sales table the sales table is filtered to the year 2010 and then it calculates to see if it's over 50,000 give it a zero or a one same thing for 2011 it has one filter for the year 2011 our total row has no filters it's basically saying give me all of the sales data check to see if it's greater than 50,000 if not give it a zero if so give it a one so that's how we're going to solve this problem uh, let's create a new measure we're going to call this uh, real values because that's what we actually want to get not what we are seeing here uh, and we're just going to do a simple if and use a very handy function called has one filter to check if the place we're performing the calculation has a filter or not so this will be a really good example to see has one filter we're going to be using the sales order date and we're going to be using the year because if you look over to the right in the values, well, we have order date year, so we need to specify year. So if uh, the sales order date year has one filter, let's give it a two, else give it a three. Just to show you kind of how this has one filter works. Uh, we have our real values here. Let's drag this in. And we can see there is a two for every row that's not the aggregate row, and the aggregate row has a three. Just to check back again, that's because if the order date year has a filter, give it a two. If not, give it a three. So it's saying the aggregate row does not have a filter. So this is how we get around our problem. Uh, so let's go ahead and specify what we want to do if the row has a filter. And that's going to be the exact same as our if statement um, we had earlier, but let's go ahead and rewrite it. If, um, we're going to say if some uh, sales amount is greater than 50,000, uh, give it a one, else give it a zero. Um, let's close that off, give it a comma. And we're close to back to where we started. Uh, it's uh, having a one and a zero if under 50,000, but now the total, if we're looking here, is still left at a three. <laughs> so now we need to calculate when the, row, uh, when the filter context does not include a filter, what do we wanna do? we want to just basically take the distinct number of years in which there are more than $50,000 worth of sales. It's a little bit trickier than it sounds, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So I haven't covered the calculate function on my channel yet, but I will be doing that soon. 
Right now, let me give you a little uh, explanation of how Calculate works. It's basically a wrapper function that allows you to perform an aggregation while specifying the filters that you want to apply to that calculation. It takes the current filter context into perspective and you can then add or remove filters as you want very easily. So that's what we're going to use today. So the calculate, um, we're going to take the uh, count rows, and we're going to count the distinct rows of the order date uh, year again, because we just want the number of years in which the sales are over 50,000. So the way calculate works is it allows you to specify filters to the tables you want to work with. We're going to filter the sales table. And this is kind of where it gets really tricky. We're going to want to throw in another calculate function because we still need to calculate when the year's sales are over 50,000. So we're going to throw in another calculate. We're going to sum sales amount. Um, we're going to sum that sales amount and apply a filter called all accept, or it's actually a function that specifies the filter called all accept. All accept works by basically taking your current filters and eliminating all of the filters that apply to columns that aren't specified in this function. So let me just take you through here. So we're going to use the sales table and the column we're specifying is the order date year. So this is basically saying any columns that aren't this order date year erase all the filters. Um, and we are just going to check to see if that's greater than 50,000. Yeah, so that was a lot. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and chew on that for a little bit. Uh, here's just another brief explanation of what's going on. So first we're checking to see if the table uh, where it's being calculated has one filter, which is the detail rows, the rows with years. Uh, if it has one filter, go ahead and check to see if the sum of the sales amount is greater than 50,000. If so, give it a one. If not, give it a zero. And that's what we can see uh, based on here. And over uh, on real values, we have this calculate function taking the place of when it doesn't have a filter. And when it doesn't have a filter, go ahead and count the distinct number of rows speci uh, specifically for the order date year and filter the sales table to show me when um, when the sales amount is less or greater than 50,000, taking away the filters to the sales table that don't pertain to the year column. So go ahead and listen to that a couple times if you need to. And just to give you an idea, at, uh, before I had specified this to be three, like hard-coded, let's actually get rid of this um, just for demonstration purposes and give this a nine because I want to show you that this is working. So we have our, if it has one filter, give it a one. If it doesn't, give it a nine. Uh, when we place back what we had just typed, our big calculate within a calculate function, we'll go ahead and click enter, and we will see the three that we wanted to see. Because at this point, it's counting the number of years that, um, that the sales is over 50,000, just like we wanted. And that's kind of how you get a, a round measure totals. If you don't do this trick and you don't specify if it has one filter or not, usually it won't really work out. You can use calculated columns to get around this, but in case you really want to use measures and be able to slice your data in interesting ways and still be able to make calculations on the fly, go ahead and specify your filter context. Um, specify how things are calculated in those specific filter contexts. And yeah, this is how you do it. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next Dax for Power BI video.